In an alternate universe of 1960, technological advancements make interplanetary travel possible. There are rumors, unverified evidence, that there is a civilization on Mars, and the human civilization on Earth is about to send two astronauts to find out. Sure, the technology of satellites and space telescopes don't yet exist, but by golly, the prosperity of the 1960s can afford billions to find out. What could go wrong? This episode about seeking new life and new civilizations was written by Rod Serling and directed by Mitchell Leeson. As always, the alternative theories mentioned within may cause anxiety, rage, and disbelief. But that's why you're here, I hope. Kindly consider leaving a like, share, or subscribe if you enjoy this content. Now, let's get us to Mars, because people are alike all over. Two astronauts are about to embark on a fantastic mission. They will be the first to travel to and land on Mars, in hopes to reach out to a new world. One, Markinson, is optimistic. He is not only confident they will meet people, he believes people are alike all over, even on another planet with its own culture and unique history. Then there is Conrad, a cynical, pessimistic, and wary space traveler. Conrad is a fearful fellow who is afraid where he is going and where he is leading from. Conrad's fear is not unjustified. Their landing on the Red Planet is severe, leaving Markison badly injured. Pleading to make his life meaningful, Markison asks Conrad to open the door so he can see what he gave his life for. Conrad, too afraid, refuses. Markison passes away, his final wish unfulfilled. Conrad learns he is not alone and has grabbed the attention of something outside. A tapping, a rapping, rapping at the hull. Whether it was out of resignation or courage, Conrad opens the hatch and sees Martians. Dressed in Roman tunic and gowns, they first greet Conrad in silence. No guns here. However, Conrad discovers he is communicating telepathically as the Martians put their language into his head. They comfort Conrad, promising him a home while giving Markinson a decent burial. Among all the Martians who welcomed him, Conrad is especially drawn to Tinya. Conrad is given a new house, something that was fabricated quickly and curiously mimics a middle-class American home to the finest detail. Even the scotch seems authentic. But something isn't right. The place has no windows. The doors do not open. Before the walls slide apart and he learns exactly where he is. Conrad's house is in fact a habitat, and he is a caged specimen in a zoo. The once level-headed Martians gawk at their latest attraction. The faces in the crowd exhibit marvel, relief, even a hint of disgust. Only Tinya shows remorse. Conrad screams into the Martian skies. People are alike everywhere. If you read The Twilight Zone Companion by Mark Zickery, you'll learn this episode was adapted from Paul W. Fairman's Brothers Beyond the Void, published in the March 1952 issue of Fantastic Adventures. It is a story about caging humans that would be repeated in many science fiction, such as Planet of the Apes and Star Trek. There are other alternative theories. Another theme of the episode is fear. Conrad is overwhelmed with it. We can only speculate why he was allowed, perhaps coerced, to go on a mission he was very uncomfortable with. But fear is something Conrad defines himself early and often, before his Martian greeting. The question is, when did the Martians begin to read his mind? That was well before he opened the hatch. The Martians by then had already gauged Conrad, not by intelligence, but by his primal emotions of fear. They were already in his head, saw what they needed, and Conrad's fate was sealed. The little gesture grabbing and tossing the handgun from Conrad's grip wasn't a statement on gun violence, 
as much contrasting the fear or lack of fear between human and Martian. The episode makes clear the Martians imbued Conrad with psychic powers, at least able to communicate, even read, in Martian. They were able to dig into his mind and extract pretty accurate depictions of Earth home life with stunning accuracy and speed. Budget constraints aside, we never saw a Martian assembly line producing facsimiles of earthly objects. What if the look, feel, and even taste were illusions? While the cage was real, everything else was fake. He may be holding a piece of Martian clay in the shape of a drinking glass. The liquid he drinks only tastes like scotch in his head, and a good one at that. So which is it? Did the Martians create a habitat overnight, complete with dishes and silverware, or was it an elaborate illusion? We can look to Star Trek, the original series, for clues. In the episode, The Cage, also re-released as The Menagerie, Captain Pike is imprisoned on an alien planet by its host, the Talosians. They get into Pike's head, extract information, and recreate illusions that look and feel real. They do this for their entertainment. By great coincidence, this episode also stars Susan Oliver as an unwilling co-conspirator. But there is another classic episode, Shore Leave, where the crew unknowingly is under surveillance by alien technology. Fantasies are constructed on behalf of its victim, where manufactured people and props appear out of nowhere. In Shore Leave, this is for the crew's entertainment, even if they won't appreciate it. People Are Alike All Over is a message story with clever irony. And if you follow me on my retrospectives on the Twilight Zone episodes, I'm not a fan of message stories. The story beats are very simple. Conrad talks about fear for a long time early, gets reassured by the Martians, lets his guard down, and is betrayed. The idea will be adapted better in television and film later. Props to Roddy McDowell, who can turn the worst dialogue into Shakespeare, and Susan Oliver for her performance as well. I didn't remember from my early days, she did show regret in Conrad's imprisonment. In some ways, this episode is the inverse of Third from the Sun. There, the episode begins with a conversation in front of a fence before it turns to drama about escaping to Earth for freedom. Here, it begins with a conversation behind a fence before the astronauts leave Earth to be trapped on Mars. There may even be a connected universe with another Season 1 episode, Elegy. According to the short story it was based on, Mars had a civilization that would not take in refugees from Earth trying to escape the last Great War. It's not a bad episode, sort of a sad one at that. I give it two dimensions out of five. It does have a couple tropes. Tag them, it's not easy being an astronaut, and because aliens. This is Mr. G of Synergy, leaving you with these final words. Don't believe everything you see from Mars, not even in the Twilight Zone. Check out other videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.